Hey everyone, I'm Darren, this is Ben, we're with the Never Forgotten Games. Welcome to the 5th Annual Never Forgotten Games. Uh, thank you all for everything that you do. None of this would be possible without the hard work and effort and the time spent by all the volunteers to put this thing on. Uh, so all you volunteers, all you judges that are going to come out on July 15th, uh, really thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, it's amazing to see the, the type of product that you guys put together and uh, the, the quality of an event that this town, that this community gets to experience. So thank you for that. The purpose of this video is to discuss movement standards, workout standards for the workouts to come on July 15th. Uh, we're going to have a total of five workouts. We're going to go over four workouts in this video. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the flow of each of the workouts, the individual movements of each of the workouts, uh, and what those standards are as far as judging to try to make your guys' jobs easier. Uh, don't hesitate, guys. At the end of this video, I'm sure there's going to be some questions and whatnot. If there is, shoot me an email, shoot me a call. Happy to talk and answer about any questions. Uh, you know, hit us up on our social media. Maybe we can make some of those uh, questions and answers public. I'm sure if you have a question, there's more than one person who has a question. So, uh, or has that same question. All right, so the first workout for the Never Forgotten Games is dedicated to Shasta County Sheriff's Deputy Nate Helly. The workout is 33 wall ball shots, 22 pull ups, and 11 ground to overhead. The guys will be using a 20 pound ball and aiming at a 20 foot target, or sorry, a 10 foot target. Uh, the ladies will be holding a 14 pound ball and they will be aiming for a nine foot target. Uh, the pull ups, we're looking for chin over bar and then the ground to overhead. The uh, guys will have a 115 pound bar and the girls will have a 75 pound bar. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at the wall ball shots. All right, now we're gonna talk about wall balls. So there's two standards with wall balls that, that we really gotta keep in mind. First one is how low we go. That's what we're gonna concentrate on first. And then the second one is how high the ball goes, okay? So uh, with our wall ball height, uh, the, essentially the way the wall ball goes, is we're holding a 20 pound or a 14 pound ball in our hands. We're dropping into a front squat with that ball, uh, kind of at that shoulder, uh, upper chest, head height. And then we're going to stand up explosively out of the bottom, throwing the ball overhead to hit a target at either 10 feet for the guys or 9 feet for the ladies. Uh, the movement from the bottom to the top, there's not really any way to kind of govern like the strict specific way that that needs to happen. The main thing we want to be concerned about as judges is that they're going to full depth and then that ball is hitting that minimum height of that target of either 9 or 10 feet. The way we tell if somebody's going low enough with a wall ball is we're looking for the top of the hips right here, this hip crease to be below the top of the knee. So for instance, hip, knee, these are the two points. This is not deep enough. This is deep enough. We're just looking for that, that uh, slight offset. It doesn't have to be much, just a little bit. So Ben, go ahead and demonstrate. Give me three wall balls going to full depth hitting the target. So if you look at his hip height to his knees, Ben's going extra low because he's got a lot of mobility. You might not always see that. Uh, you might not always see that much depth. That, that's still a good rep there too. Go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and go, just hold the ball and go down, there you go. All right, hip, knee. We're about parallel right there. That's all right, right there, he's down low, perfect. Now we broke the plane of that knee. That's our full depth, that's what we're looking for on each rep. If they're above that, hey, you know what? This is a good community event. You can go ahead and relax, Ben. This is a good community event. If they're really, really close, hey, let's give them a warning. If they continue to not go deep enough, we need to start calling no reps. We have to hold the standard of the competition. That's really gonna be kind of the expectation throughout all of these workouts too, is, is uh, there's a lot of people here working very hard. 
to uh, you know to, to to compete, and they've trained very hard for this event, uh, and so it's it is important to them. It's important to the sanctity of the competition that we hold that standard. But at the same time, we also want to give a little bit of love, a little bit of encourage, encouragement as judges. That's kind of the flavor of our event. So if you have somebody who's close, give them a good reminder. Let them know, hey, you got to go lower. If they do it on the next rep. We got to call that. We got to call it a no rep and have them work towards uh, getting that full depth. Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about wall ball height, the second standard that we need to be aware of. So we're going to use this black stripe up here for demonstration. During the actual competition, though, we will have some designated targets mounted to the rig that will be easily identifiable. Uh, so key point with the wall ball height, where that ball is going to hit, we're looking to hit just above the bottom edge of the target. So if we have a 10 foot target, that target that's mounted on the rig, the bottom edge of that's going to be at 10 feet. So as long as the center of the ball makes it above that bottom edge and contacts the target, that's a good rep. Now if it airmails and it doesn't actually touch the target, that's a no rep. If it goes below the target and it doesn't reach that height threshold, that's a no rep as well. Okay, so on this black stripe, the top edge of the black stripe, that's 10 feet. The bottom edge of the black stripe is nine feet. So Ben's a guy, so he's gonna try to get it above the top edge to get a good quality rep on this. So Ben, go ahead and show me three good reps. Perfect. So those are three good reps. Got it above that, that uh, 10 foot line up there. Uh, and once we get to the competition and actually look at the targets, we'll re-explain this stuff so you guys see what I mean as far as what, that, uh, you know, what those exact heights are at. Uh, real quick, just to demonstrate some no reps to you guys, I'm gonna have Ben throw a couple where it just air mails and it doesn't actually contact the wall. Go ahead. There you go. So yeah, so those are the three, that are the, like four different variations of what you'll commonly see are no reps, right? Doesn't go up as high or like it contacts the wall below the target and continues up, um, you know, or just simply doesn't go high enough. Those are all no reps. We can't count those. They're gonna have to redo those reps uh, over again. All right, let's move into the pull-ups. Okay, so with pull-ups, pull-up standard's really basic. We just need to get the chin over the bar. It doesn't need to be way over the bar. It just needs to be kind of over the bar. Over the bar, that's the standard, okay? There's three different typical ways you're gonna see people do pull-ups. You're gonna have strict, you're gonna have kipping, you're gonna have butterfly. We're gonna demonstrate all three of those for you right now. Good way to be able to look at these things, like you have to be able to make sure that that chin's getting over the bar, and you'll see that some people really like to test that threshold. And you're going to have judges kind of guessing, was that over or was that not over? Big part of this is body positioning. If you put yourself kind of like quartered off of their body a little bit, not necessarily in line with the bar because we don't want to be standing in somebody else's lane as a judge, but get yourself to where you're kind of quartered off in their lane to where I'm standing over here in relation to Ben or, uh, you know, the opposite. I'm behind him just kind of at this back quarter and then I'm watching that bar and I'm looking for that chin to clear the bar. Uh, we have to be able to get, or we have to get full range of motion in the pull up. So not only does that chin have to go over, our arms have to be fully extended at the bottom of that pull up. Don't want to forget that part. If people are just coming to here and they're doing these short pull ups, that's sorry, no rep, no rep, no rep, no rep until those arms get to full lockout, okay? So Ben, go ahead and show me a strict pull-up. We'll start with the easy one first, right? So there he goes, full lockout, chins all the way over the bar. Perfect. I told him to do one and he's gonna probably do another 20 of them. Um, okay, and then uh, now we'll do a kipping pull-up. Go ahead and do a kipping pull-up. All right. And we'll do a butterfly pull up. Last variation. So 
So I want you guys to notice that while Ben is doing these pull-ups, he's making it very, very clear that his chin is getting over the bar. If you have people who are barely cutting it and they're making you feel uncomfortable as a judge as to whether they're getting their chin over the bar, let them know that, tell them get that chin a little bit higher. Okay, but also do them the favor of putting yourself in the best position where you can make a pretty clear determination on whether or not they're getting up high enough, okay? All right, the final movement for the first workout is ground to overhead. So uh, ground to overhead can be anything. We have to just get the bar from the ground to the overhead locked position. That's all we're looking for. They can get it up there via a power snatch, a squat snatch, a power clean, a squat clean, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's pretty open uh, standards on that end. As long as both, uh, both ends of the barbell contact the ground at the same time and our finishing position is knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, full locked out uh, overhead, okay? So Ben, go ahead and demonstrate uh, power clean ground overhead. There you go, full lockout, shoulders are open all the way, full extension on the elbows, hips and knees. Go ahead and do another one. There you go. Uh, so that's one variation, probably one of the most common variations that you guys are gonna see is the, uh, is the clean and jerk version. Now we'll do the snatch version. So you're gonna notice Ben's grip is a little bit wider on the bar. And instead of just pressing out, he's going straight overhead. Same rules apply though. Full extension, knees, hips, shoulders open all the way, elbows fully extended with the bar overhead locked out. So those are pretty good standards, pretty easy to see standards, right? They have to be straight at the same time. Now we're gonna talk about no reps because these are the things that are a little bit more subtle with this movement. The common thing that you're gonna see is uh, they may extend their knees and their hips, but then they bend their knees and their hips and extend their elbows. And then as soon as they go to re-extend their knees and hips, the elbows break down and they drop the weight. And they never actually reach that full extended position. So Ben, go ahead and uh, do a clean and jerk, but uh, do the, like, just catch, your, uh, catch the jerk in, that, in the re-bend position. Okay, so right there. That's what you're gonna see people default to, and then a good rep is Ben's gonna stand all the way up. Bam, rep's done, now the bar can go down. Okay, now we're gonna show you a no rep version of that. So do go to that same position. Okay, re-bend position. Now Ben's gonna stand up and his elbows are gonna break down. It's very subtle, but he's not getting that full extension. Judges look out for that. People will use and abuse that thing. And uh, again, kind of going back to that holding the standard on this, on, on these workouts and on these movements, that's a really key one that you'll see people abuse a lot. Don't let them do that. If they're not reaching full lockout, tell them full lockout, full lockout, full lockout. Give them those cues. Tell them, hey, you need to lock the elbows out. Hey, you need to lock the, your knees out, lock your hips out. Give them those cues. Uh, if they continue to do it, you need to tell them a no rep, and if they need a further explanation, just tell them, hey, your knees, your hips, and your elbows all have to be locked out at the same time. Stand all the way up. Uh, just try to communicate that as quickly and, and clearly to them as you can, but don't let, them, don't let them just go through the whole workout doing those. You'll see a lot of people trying to do that. <laughs>now to workout number two dedicated to el dorado county deputy brian ishmael so the workout uh, is a four-part workout it's kind of pick your poison so each partner gets to pick uh, one set of movements uh, it's relay style again so only one partner is going to work at a time once that partner completes uh, their movements they're going to go back to the start line tag in the next partner and rotate all the way through just like that so uh, the way the workout goes, partner one, the first set of movements is going to be 36 alternating dumbbell snatches with a 50 pound dumbbell for the guys, 35 
pound dumbbell for the ladies, and then 136 double unders. Uh, after that, partner gets done with those movements, so go back, tag partner two in. Partner two has 18 hang clean and jerks, 115 pound barbell for the guys, 75 pound barbell for the ladies, and then 18 lateral over the bar burpees with a double jump. We'll show you guys what that's like here in just a sec. Uh, once they're done, go back, tag partner number three, then we're gonna have 18 squat cleans, same barbell weight, 115 and 75, and then 18 sumo deadlift high pulls with the barbell. That partner's done, boom, tag in the final partner, and they're gonna have 18 burpee pull-ups uh, and 18 shoulder to overhead with the same uh, weight, okay? So let's move into uh, 36 alternating dumbbell snatches and the double unders. So with the dumbbell snatches, uh, what we're looking for is a continuous movement from the ground to the overhead position. The dumbbell can't like contact their head or their shoulder. There can't be any um, uh, significant stopping point. It just has to be one fluid movement. Both heads of the dumbbell, both heads of the dumbbell have to contact the floor. We can't just contact it with one head. So both heads of the dumbbell have to contact the floor and then going straight up and overhead to the full lockout position overhead. So Ben, go ahead and show us what one looks like. So what Ben's showing us there is how to do the full, or how to do the alternating portion as well, and that's the next thing I'm gonna hit on. Uh, when we're alternating the dumbbell from right hand to left hand, we can alternate on our way down. We have to get that full extension overhead, making sure that our knees, hips, and elbows are fully extended, just like on the previous standards. Uh, but then once we go to switch hands with that, we can do that as the dumbbell is coming down. That's the more efficient way of doing it and a pretty common way that you'll see. So yeah, one of the things that we don't want to uh, see when we're doing the alternating uh, portion of the dumbbell snatch is where people go to this fully locked out position and they just drop it from way over their head and catch it down here with their arms. That's a safety issue. That's also gonna be a no wrap if somebody does that. So Ben, go ahead and demonstrate what that looks like without knocking yourself out. Okay. So the proper way, we'll circle back to the way that this should look like, once that dumbbell gets below the, the, the bridge of the forehead, once that dumbbell gets into this position, now we can go ahead and make that exchange. Go ahead and show them what that looks like, Ben. So good, safe exchange. Now you might not always see it move that clean. So the other option that you'll typically see is where they'll put the dumbbell all the way down on the ground, then they'll switch hands and then go up and do it again. A little bit slower, uh, but fairly efficient and a lot safer, easier to control. Go ahead and show us what that looks like, Ben. There you go. The dumbbell snatch, not much to it. All right, moving on, we'll go into the double unders. Double unders, this, is, uh, this can get tricky. So if you've never uh, counted double unders before, watch, uh, go onto YouTube or watch this over and over again. But you know, go on to YouTube or if you know a friend who has double unders and have them do that and practice counting those double unders. A good trick to it is watch the feet, don't watch the rope. Every time the feet contact the ground, that's a rep. So you go one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. One thing you gotta be kinda keen on is when the double under start. Some people will start with a single under or two and then kick into their double unders. Those single unders are no reps. They don't count. The only reps that count is when they go into their double under jumping. So you have to kinda be able to recognize that part uh, if you're unsure if you're going to be able to recognize that, just ask the athlete, hey, are you going to go right into uh, hitting your double unders or are you going to do a couple singles first to kind of prepare your mind for being able to pick up on those cues. Once you do it a few times, it gets pretty easy to look at though, or pretty easy to spot and it's not really that big of a deal. Okay, so Ben, go ahead and show us a couple double unders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, just like that. That's how we count double unders. We'll get a little bit closer into the feet so you guys can see it.
Beautiful. For the next movement, we're gonna do hang, clean, and jerks. <laughs> For partner number two, followed by uh, burpees over the bar with a double jump. So, uh, a hang, clean, and power jerk. Er, a hang, clean, and jerk. Is gonna start with the bar above the knees and below the hips. So we can't start with the bar in our hip pocket. We can't hold it high up like this and our arms have to be fully extended at the bottom. So Ben, go ahead and get in the starting position. All right, so that's our hang, clean, and jerk starting position. From there, he's gonna dip, drive his hips, catch the bar into the front rack position, and then press the bar out overhead, getting triple extension, meaning knees, hips, elbows, fully extended. Go ahead and show us a couple reps. Boom, full extension. Back. So same rules apply, right? We don't wanna see people do the extend and then they drop before they get to full extension. It needs to be press up, stand up, rep is done. Uh, go ahead and show us a couple more. There you go. So if you notice, Ben's arms are getting fully extended at the bottom of the hand clean. The bar is going below the level of the hip. Uh, and he's keeping it off of the ground because it's a hang clean. After partner one, or excuse me, after partner two completes 18 hang clean and jerks, they're gonna move into 18 over the bar burpees with a double jump. These are gonna be lateral over the bar burpees. So what we're looking for is, first we'll talk burpee standards. From the standing position, he's gonna drop down chest and feet, or chest and hips have to be in contact with the ground. At the bottom of the burpee, he's gonna stand up, and now he's gonna go over the bar and back over the bar like that. So it's a double jump this way, that way. He's gonna finish on the same side, and that's where the rep ends, is once they get back to that starting position, that's rep one. Go ahead, do rep two. Just like that. Yeah, go ahead and show them a few reps together. There you go, good. Ben almost broke a sweat there. So when we're doing our double jump, things to keep in mind is it is a jump, it's not a step over. If they step over, we're gonna be calling that a scaled movement. So what a jump looks like is we're looking for like, you know, kind of spirit of the movement especially, is we want two feet to come off of the ground at relatively the same time and land on the opposite of the side of the bar at relatively the same time. So go ahead and show us, just jump, uh, just jump once across, kind of slow and deliberate, boom. Now back across, yes, just like that. That's what we're looking at. What we don't want, can you kind of do the like the slinky jump? We don't want that. That's basically stepping over with a purpose uh, or stepping over with some excitement. We want to jump over, we don't want to step over. So good, nice, crisp, two foot jump back and forth. Partner number two has gone back, tagged in partner number three and partner number three is gonna come over and they're gonna start out with 18 squat cleans followed by 18 sumo deadlift high pulls. So squat clean, bar has to start at the bottom they're gonna stand up, pulling with a deadlift, nice violent hip drive, and they're gonna catch the bar into the front rack position. For the rep to be finished, they're gonna to have to drop all the way to the bottom of a squat. This is gonna be same standards as a wall ball. So the hips are gonna go down and back. The top of the hip crease is gonna go below the top of the knee, or sorry, the hip crease is gonna go below the top of the knee with the barbell in that front rack position, essentially doing a front squat and they're gonna stand all the way up with their knees and hips fully extended. Ben, go ahead and show us what that looks like. Full extension and the bar drops. Uh, what we don't want is people dropping the bar early where they're gonna stand up, they're gonna get into the full squat and then before those knees fully lock out, they're already dropping the bar and then locking the knees out. If we rush too much, sometimes that's gonna happen. It's important that us judges call that stuff out. Go ahead and show us what that looks like, Ben. So 
So now one that was a good demonstration because that one's pretty close. That one could have maybe been a good rep, could have maybe been a no rep. Uh, it's it, it, very very small. There we go. That looks that looks a little bit more obvious, a little bit easier to spot, and you will see that people just yard sale the bar before they get all the way up. Make sure they're standing up all the way out of the pocket and make sure that they get those hips all the way down on that front squat. Uh, and then the only other part of that is just that both, both sides of the barbell have to be in contact with the ground at the start of each movement. All right, one thing worth mentioning with the squat clean is that you have to start at the bottom, you have to do a front squat and you have to stand all the way up. It does not necessarily have to be one fluid movement. So depending on our individual skill level, uh, we may be able to pick the bar up and drop right into the bottom of a squat. Other of us might have to do a power clean, then front squat it. So let me show you both uh, different ways. So go ahead and do a, like one fluid movement squat clean. Boom, catches it, drops into the bottom of the squat. Looks nice and smooth, great. Now do a power clean into a front squat. Power clean, front squat. That's acceptable as well. You may see it both ways. So now moving on to the sumo deadlift high pull. <clears throat> All that really has to happen is the hands have to be inside the knees and he's gonna start in that deadlift position right there uh, or with a little bit wider stance at his feet, narrow grip on the bar and he's just gonna stand up with, with the bar starting on the ground. He's gonna stand up and lift the bar all the way up to the collarbone height. Go ahead and do it. So if you notice the bar is reaching his collarbones, that's what we're looking for, is getting right, right along this line, okay? This is our threshold as far as like getting full, full height, full pull on that. The other thing is, is elbows up. We want the elbows to be above the bar. That's probably more of a technique thing than a standard thing, but I would still cue the athletes to do that because that'll kind of help them out. So go ahead and show us uh, a few more. So if you notice, same thing as all the other reps, full knee, hip extension when he's standing up. We gotta lock those knees out, gotta get those hips fully extended and get the bar up to the collarbone. Uh, same standards apply. Partner number three is gonna get done with their workout and they're gonna go tag in partner number four. They're gonna start out with 18 burpee pull-ups and 18 shoulder to overhead. So let's talk about burpee pull-ups. Ben's gonna do a burpee, chest and hips, contact the ground, stand up, and then he's gonna do a pull up and get the chin over the bar. All right, so same standards apply. Chest and hips, contact the ground at the bottom of the burpee. And then on the pull up, we just need to get the chin over the bar. It's gonna be a jumping pull up essentially. As you may see that the elbows, uh, when they jump up, the elbows are bent when they catch the bar. That's perfectly fine. They don't have to start in this position. They can jump up and pull themselves all the way up that is acceptable for this portion of the workout. After they do 18 uh, burpee pull-ups, we're gonna do 18 shoulder to overhead. So our starting position is just having the bar in the front rack in the standing position. So go ahead and get into that position now, Ben. All right, there's our starting position, shoulder to overhead. We're going from taking the bar on our shoulder to the overhead lock position. That does mean hips and knees need to be fully extended. Same thing across the board. We gotta have full triple extension all the way up. Knees, hips, elbows locked out. So go ahead and show us three reps of a shoulder to overhead. One. Perfect. If you notice that when Ben presses that bar up and his knees are bent, he stands all the way up. Same theme as all the other movements, right? And you guys can kind of see how if somebody is not doing that full movement, how this translates through a lot of the other movements uh, that we're going to be seeing during the event. All right, so for workout number three, this is dedicated to Cal Fire firefighter Eva Shiky. Uh, this is going to be, a, or excuse me, this is going to be 30 worm squats. Uh, partner one and two will break off from the worm, and then they'll do. 30 box facing over the box burpees between the two of them. That'll be a cumulative total. And then 130 toes to bar with the whole team together. The entire team has to accumulate 130 toes to bar 
Uh, there's no minimum requirement for individual athletes. So if there's one athlete who can do toes to bar and you choose to split the 130 toes to bar uh, among three of the four athletes, that's perfectly fine or any combination therein. Uh, after the 130 toes to bar, the other two partners, so it'll be partner three and four, will break off back to the box. They'll do another 30 box facing over the box burpees and then we'll come back to the worm and do another uh, 30 worm squats. For all female teams, they're gonna only do 20 worm squats total. Okay, so first things first, we'll start uh, with the worm and we'll discuss the worm standards. So with the worm squat, uh, all rules apply as if it's a barbell. The team's gonna set up on, the opposite, or on one side of the worm. They're all gonna use good teamwork and communication and pick the worm up off of the ground and get it onto one of their shoulders. The team needs to be on the same side of the worm. We're gonna make that a standard this year. The team needs to be on the same side of the worm for the worm squats. Uh, then from there, we're looking for starting at the top with the knees and hips fully extended. We're gonna drop all the way down to the crease of our hip is below the top of our knee, same as we do on a barbell. And then we stand all the way up together until our knees and hips are fully extended. There is a little bit of a synchronization factor here. That synchronization is gonna occur at the top of the movement. So what that means is no person on the team can go down until all four teammates are standing in that full uh, locked out position. Conversely, if they go to the bottom and then one teammate stands up before another one, no big deal, that's still considered synchronized and, and not a no rep. Uh, the only no rep issues happen when somebody hasn't stood all the way up yet and another teammate already starts to drop down, okay? We'll go ahead and demonstrate. We're gonna show you guys three warm squats uh, to get those out of the way and just show you good form with that. Pay close attention as you guys are watching this and remember you're, you're watching this on like YouTube or whatever. So you can rewind this, pay close attention to what everybody's hips are doing. Make sure that those hips are going down below the top of the knee. All right, right shoulder down. We'll bring it to the hip, pause, and then all the way up. One, two, three. Ready, up. Okay, one, two, three, down. 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 And drop. All right, so the team just got done doing 30 warm squats. Now partner one and partner two have broke off from the worm and now they are over here at the plyo box. So what we have is a 20 inch plyo box. Partner one and partner two are gonna do 30 uh, box facing over the box burpees. So the movement starts with a burpee. Same rules and standards apply. We want chest and hips to touch the ground at the bottom of the burpee. Then they're gonna jump onto the box and over the box or they're gonna step onto the box and over the box. Doesn't matter, either way is RX. The main thing that we want to see in the movement over the box is that both feet are in contact with the top of the box at the same time. That's the only standard that we're worried about. The rep finishes when they contact the ground on the other side of the box. So Ben's gonna demonstrate a couple reps doing a burpee to a two foot jump over the box. Then we'll move on and have him show a burpee with a step over the box. Go ahead and show them how it's done, Ben. Chest and hips touch the ground, two feet on the box, back over to the side, chest and hips on the ground, two feet on the box, back over to the other side. There's two reps right there. Okay, Ben, go ahead and show us stepping over the box. Chest and hips on the ground, one, two, back to the ground, there's one rep, chest and hips on the ground, one, two, and to the other side. There's two reps, that's all it is. All right. So we just finished up our uh, burpee box jump overs. Now we're moving on to toes to bar. So the whole team is gonna get together. We'll have all four team members reconvened at the pull up bar. And amongst the four of them, they're going to accomplish 130 toes to bar in any combination and any rep scheme that they want. Like I previously said, there's no minimum rep count. So if there's a teammate who can't do toes to bar, no big deal as long as the rest of the team can get through the 130 toes to bar cumulatively, okay? So, standards with the toes to bar. We're gonna start palms facing forward up on the, up on the pull up bar. 
And what we're looking for is that the heels start behind the vertical plane of the bar and at the top of our swing, our toes, both of our toes are gonna touch the bar. Like the title says, toes the bar. So Ben, go ahead and hang from the bar real quick. So camera, if you can kind of look a little bit where the plane of the toes are, or, or sorry, where the plane of the pull-up bar is down to his feet. When his heels are behind the bar, that's where the rep is gonna essentially start. If you have people short stroking their reps to where their feet stay forward and they never go all the way behind the bar, that's a no rep. So they have to get full extension on their body at the bottom of that toes to bar repetition. Then from there, they can swing or lift the toes all the way up to touch the bar. So Ben, go ahead and give us five good quality toes to bar reps. So if you guys notice, the heels go behind the bar toes go all the way up and touch the bar and that's what we're looking for right there okay now Ben can you try to demonstrate uh, like some short stroked toes to bar reps so see how he's staying pretty tight core but those feet are not going all the way out so he's not getting that full range of motion we want to make sure and get that full range of motion heels behind the bar toes all the way up to touch it any other points to that Ben I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, so then from there, the remainder of the workout is partner three and four. The two partners that didn't do the burpee box jump overs are now gonna do the 30 burpee box jump overs by themselves. And then the team is gonna reconvene back at the worm, do another 30 worm squats or 20 if they're an all-female team, and then finish that by the rest of the team moving across, or the entire team moving across the finish line for their time to stop.